I'm David Zlotnick from uh, McDonald's. I'm currently working in our global public relations group, but I've spent the last nine years in global marketing overseeing the Ronald McDonald brand around the world, among other initiatives. So I recently made the move over to global public relations, so I'm not necessarily connected to Ronald as much anymore. Um, but as you can see, because I've got my Ronald socks on somewhere. I'm too old for this. There you go. Uh, you can take the, the clown out of the boy. But, oh, you can take the boy out of the clown, but you can't take the clown out of the boy. Um, so before I start talking about Ronald, I think it's important that I just share a little bit with you about the context of who we are as a brand. Is that it? That's it. OK. So McDonald's is made up of more than 36,000 restaurants worldwide, feeding 69 million guests every single day. We're a company of locally operated businesses run by men and women in their communities. And as a franchised organization, there are many requirements that they must follow, but they also have the opportunity to grow and develop their own businesses as it makes sense for their culture, whether it's in Chicago, Dubai, Munich, or Sao Paulo. And customers have grown to rely on McDonald's for consistency and great tasting food, value, and convenience. Ronald is one of those rare creative brand assets that we share globally and recognize that no matter how different McDonald's may be from city to city or culture to culture, we're still viewed as one brand, McDonald's. And Ronald gives us the opportunity to centrally control and manage how he looks, how he behaves, and how he interacts with customers and communities. At the same time, we're seeing the rise of the corporate brand where conversations dominate communication and consumer advocacy is the new gold. And we knew Ronald could help us advance the brand in that direction, but only if he evolved. So let's go back to 1963, where it all started. A lot had changed by 2013 when we realized it was time to evolve Ronald with today's customers' thoughts and beliefs. So now take a look at how he changed over the years. What began so humbly 50 plus years ago as a local promotional TV appearance in Washington, D.C., had turned into a pop culture icon more recognizable than Santa Claus. So the clown wearing that silly paper cup for a nose had become a celebrity. I'm waiting for this to catch up. So three years following his debut, Ronald was named national spokesperson for McDonald's and made his first national appearance in a TV commercial. The same year, he joined the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, where today he appears every Thanksgiving as a giant balloon and live as part of the parade, driving his big red shoe car. By 1966, at that time, McDonald's had grown to 862 restaurants in the U.S., International expansion began in 1967, first in Canada, then in Puerto Rico, growing steadily to today's 36,000 restaurants. And Ronald had to learn many languages to mirror McDonald's growing global footprint. Also, in 1974, Ronald McDonald House Charities started in Philadelphia, which today provides a home away from home for nearly 9 million families with critically ill children every year. People had changed. The slide hasn't. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. I'll cue you if it doesn't keep working. I'm OK with that. Um, people had changed. Media had changed. Culture had changed. But Ronald McDonald had not. Yes, he'd undergone minor appearance adjustments, as you had seen over the years. And his primary purpose had remained virtually the same to embody McDonald's dedication to the happiness and well-being of people worldwide, spreading smiles wherever he went. The media environment and media consumption habits evolved, and it became apparent that a similar evolution was necessary with the way Ronald engages people. There we go. So like every solid, long-storied character, we had defined who Ronald was and where he came from. Of course, Ronald comes from McDonald land. Where else would he be from? And over the years, he surrounded himself with friends who also came from McDonald land. Grimace, Hamburglar, Captain Crook, Mayor McCheese, Birdie, the Fry Guys, and Officer Big Mac. And the idea of McDonald land was always communicated through TV and some live appearances. Fantastic sets, costumes, whimsical stories, and Ronald was on a quest to protect McDonald land and McDonald's hamburgers from the evils of the Hamburglar and Captain Crook. 
So eventually, Ronald's friends were set off to live a nice and peaceful life out of the spotlight. Occasionally, you may see one of them make a cameo appearance in the media or on our social media channels or at a restaurant, which is a special treat. They also continue to make international appearances with Ronald from time to time. So with this, Ronald took center stage as the primary face of the McDonald's brand. And while Ronald is magical and can travel around the world at the snap of a finger, we realized that he was losing live presence and lacking connection with people. So in 2013, we recognized the need to increase Ronald's relevance for today. Are we, there we go. And at the same time, we had to uphold the need to be responsible marketers, which presented both challenges and opportunities. Like any good brand stewardship initiative, there was a steady stream of ongoing research to understand people's attitudes towards Ronald. We confirmed our hypotheses. He is beloved by people of all ages. We've spoken with kids, parents, young adults, and tweens all across the globe, and the feedback is consistent. People love him and want to see him in person. He touches a nostalgic place in people's hearts and reminds them of what it's like to be happy and be entertained. He maintains a positive reputation as the namesake of Ronald McDonald House Charities. And lastly, Ronald symbolizes the McDonald's corporate brand, bringing emotion to our social channels today and increasing brand advocacy. Our goal was to move him from a brand icon to what we have named a social hero. So just in case you were wondering, yes, Ronald is a clown, and that's what consumers tell us. You can imagine the debates over, is he a clown, is he a man, is he a person, what is he? He's a clown. Um, and sometimes clowns can be polarizing, but all in all, we felt good about consumer perceptions. So within that, we knew there were several challenges ahead of us. Um, McDonald's is a customer-driven business, and customers told us that they wanted to see Ronald more frequently, and that he needed to dress more for today, and they wanted to better understand his purpose. So to us, the challenges were clear, and, and we set out to do what we needed to do. So, and the journey began. Maybe the journey will begin. There we go. Um, and the journey began, and again, we returned to our customers to learn about Ronald, especially his appearance. And what we learned was that his look had become very iconic. Things like his red hair, his white face, big red shoes, and red and white striped clothes were highly recognizable and attributed to him. So we knew we couldn't mess with those. But there were some liberties, liberties given to his evolution. So first, customers said to us, Ronald works at McDonald's. He has a real job within the restaurant and should look smarter. It sounded better coming from someone with a British accent. Um, and he should no longer wear a onesie. So we knew we had to get him out, out, of, <laughs> out of that um, piece. So um, we heard he shouldn't wear such baggy clothes. We heard we could minimize the McDonald's branding on his clothing. And we heard things like, I change my clothes every day. Why can't Ronald? He's still the same person underneath. So. Um, what we did was we actually went into consumer focus groups with cut out cardboard dolls of Ronald and gave people different pieces of clothes to dress him with. And we went through this a gazillion times <laughs> to get to at least understanding what those liberties were and how far we could push things. So how in the world were we going to reinvent this highly recognizable and beloved icon? We put a brief together acknowledging those liberties and the mandatories and set about with Ronald's tailor to recreate his new look. But everything we looked at wasn't right. It was either too ordinary, anybody could buy it at retail, too whimsical, he's not a circus ringmaster, too stuffy because he is a clown. And then one day, someone said, why don't we bring in a professional costume designer? And, and it was like that light bulb moment, because as we had all thought about Ronald's clothes as just clothes, he was actually wearing a costume. And who costumes actors best? Well, of course, a Tony Award-winning costume designer. So we partnered with uh, Anne Hould Ward, who is an esteemed theatrical costume designer. She received a Tony Award for her work on the Broadway production of Disney's Beauty and the Beast, among other accolades. And interestingly also, she had earlier in her career dressed the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey circus ensembles. So there were a lot of strong synergies for us to work together. She gladly accepted the challenge, set out to design what Ronald wears today. His clothes, as you uh, can imagine, had, or maybe not, <laughs> had to have many functional requirements. Because sometimes he puts a microphone in his pocket, sometimes he has magic tricks that he hides, sometimes he runs a 5K. So the costume had to allow for all that. 
um, and for Ronald to be comfortable in a variety of climates because Ronald appears in the dead of winter in Chicago and the heat of summer in Southeast Asia. So we had to make sure we were working through all of that. And the process wasn't easy. Anne was in New York. We are here in Chicago. Ronald's all over the world every day, never in one place for very long. We had to go through a lot of approvals, fittings, fabric testing, color matching, washability testing, all of that stuff that I didn't think about when I entered into this however many years ago. So 13 months later, we were ready for Ronald's new clothes to make their debut. And Anne had worked her magic, and Ronald McDonald was ready to trade out his yellow onesie for a new wardrobe, which includes yellow cargo pants and a vest, accompanied by a red and white striped rugby shirt. His iconic big red shoes would remain the same. Reserved for special occasions, Ronald had a new whimsical blazer with the golden arches on the front pocket and his signature on the back with a special bow tie to complete the look. So that was part one. You can watch his transformation in what I call the Wonder Woman video. <laughs> Thanks, Ronald. Um, so while we knew we had to update Ronald's clothes, we also knew he needed an updated and well-defined mission. So again, we turned to our customers for input and knew what he stood for. First and foremost, it was fun, and followed by these other things in no particular order. Joy, bringing good to the world, making people smile, travels, new adventures, and an advocate for learning. Over the years, Ronald has and continues to deliver positive message and lessons about a variety of subjects like bike safety, fitness, nutrition, road safety, fire safety, self-esteem, and friendship. So how could we articulate that in a way that stays true to who he is, stays true to the McDonald's brand, and makes sense simply? So we arrived at an insight that people are inherently good and want to have fun while doing good, and that Ronald can help inspire that in people. So his mission was born, and his mission is this idea, uh, stop, okay, this idea of fun makes great things happen, which you can see in the middle here. So Ronald is a world traveler, and everywhere he goes, he inspires people to do great things through fun. The reactions from people are amazing, just the smiles, the interaction, old, young, American, uh, you know, from other countries, it, it's just unbelievable to see how people react to him. Um, he truly is magical. So we got through the, the mission, and then we had to figure out how we were going to communicate his new mission. Traditional mass media was out of the question for several reasons. Um, one, we had to signal a major shift, both in our announcement and our consumer engagement strategy. So we had three principles that, that we used. One, reality over content. We wanted to show Ronald in real life situations. Um, two, oh, oh, back, back. No traditional mass media. Um, we wanted to signal something different, that we were really thinking about Ronald in a more modern way than he had been seen and portrayed on TV over the years. Um, and lastly, short production timelines. Um, it was something we were looking to create a lot of content over a short period of time. So while we knew we wanted to be where people are on social media, and, and Ronald was in a lot of user-generated content that was out in the social space, but not always very positive. And we knew we had an opportunity to help at least balance the, the dialogue that was happening out in the social space. And we had a looming deadline, so we knew something had to happen quickly. For those of you who may not be aware, every two years, McDonald's bring to get, brings together all of its franchisees, suppliers, and corporate staff at a worldwide convention. This was the perfect stage to reintroduce Ronald in a big way. So that convention was April 2014, which became our D-Day. And while we didn't have the exact social media platforms figured out yet, we knew we couldn't miss this opportunity for engaging with our internal audience. Like every good secret, this one couldn't be kept. And about four weeks prior to his debut at convention, media calls started rolling in about new clothes for Ronald. And we'd pretend that there was nothing going on and nothing going on. And then it just kept coming. And so we, we finally realized that we couldn't keep it contained. Um, so we agreed to do an interview the week before our convention with Crane's Chicago Business, who would run an exclusive when we were ready to go. And while we had a hunch that the new Ronald costume and mission would really pick up media attention, we had no idea that it would take off the way it did. So it was covered by traditional and digital outlets ranging from pop culture like E! Online, GQ, to national news programs. It was picked up by all three networks, nationally and locally, CNN International, Associated Press, and Yahoo. 
um, and also generated countless social media conversation. And it trended organically on Facebook, Yahoo, and Twitter, all within about the same 48 hours. So within a few days, the image of Ronald and his new clothes had spread everywhere, garnering nearly one billion earned media impressions in a few short days. And this idea of fun makes great things happen, which was about inspiring the public and having them share fun and good events on social media. So the first time Ronald would take an active role on McDonald's social media channels and engage consumers using the hashtag Ronald McDonald. So all over the world he's meeting people who like him believe that fun can make great things happen and he uses social networks to post all good things and good people he discovers. Well, our press release simply stated, which you can see here, Ronald McDonald can't wait to connect with people through social media. Selfies, here I come. It's a big world, and now wherever I go and whatever I do, I'm ready to show how fun can make great things happen, said Ronald McDonald. For some reason, because we were using a hashtag, the news media got the impression that we were taking him to Twitter, which wasn't the case. And we were not ready to bring him into social media just yet with his own voice. So if you think about the timing, that was April of 2014. Um, and Ronald had never represented his own voice in social media. And we had a lot to figure out because he, he is an iconic brand character. So what would he say? Who was the right audience? How would he respond to conversations and questions? Who would he follow? And we have many local and global social media channels, and we had to figure out which ones were right for Ronald because there's only one Ronald McDonald, so he couldn't have multiple channels and conversations around the world. So we knew he had a presence online. Um, one that I had mentioned earlier was not always very positive, but people post celebrity content and think of Ronald as a, as a celebrity. So how could we harness this in a fun and positive way, really to connect with and engage Ronald's fans, kind of you know more of a quality over quantity approach. So after much discussion, we determined that we would use several key platforms for Ronald to highlight his channels and inspire people to participate. So first, we wanted to aggregate all of the user-generated content that involved Ronald out there. Um, so we created what we internally call Ronald's Social Hub. All of you who have computers up, you can go to ronaldmcdonald.com and take a look at that right now if you want. Um, we use a third-party software program that collects any user-generated content using hashtag Ronald McDonald or any other hashtags we, we put into it. Um, the social hub currently uh, is hosted on our aboutmcdonalds.com corporate site. There we go. Um, and we farm it out to our local markets to also link to their own channels. Additionally, we knew we wanted to showcase some longer form content. So we turned to our global corporate YouTube channel. You can go there too, uh, McDonald's Corp on YouTube. There's a Ronald playlist there. Um, and lastly, and this has probably been the most interesting and the most fun piece of all of this too, was realizing that Instagram was the best place for Ronald to represent and express himself. So Ronald is out on Instagram. You can go to, um, if you Google Ronald McDonald official Instagram, you can see what happens on his Instagram page. And that's really where he shares his travels, um, recounts his adventures to his followers. And we're seeing a, a lot of good um, participation there, which, which is great. Um, we also put together an editorial calendar that would bring the fun makes great things happen thing to life. Oh wait, that's not it. All right, we'll keep going. Anyway, so over the course of the next several months, um, we, we looked for events and ways to bring Ronald into the public eye and create videos that would be shareable. Again, not necessarily with the goal of making them go viral, but engaging his fans and sharing things with them that they would like. So the first thing we kicked off with in June was Ronald creating an indoor sledding hill in a shopping mall in Kuala Lumpur. And you have to remember, these people have never seen snow in their entire lives. It worked really well, too, for McDonald's Malaysia, and they promoted it through their own local Facebook page as well. Um, next, we took Ronald skydiving in Dubai. We also had the opportunity for Ronald to participate in a timely event like the uh, ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. And we sat around trying to figure out how we could get him to participate, because it all happened so quickly that yet we didn't want it to seem very commercial. And, and we happened to be sitting in a meeting, and someone Googled Ronald McDonald Ice Bucket Challenge, and a video had come up from someone who actually challenged all brand mascots to go out there and participate. So we um, uh, took uh, a jump on that, as you can see here. I would like to thank my friend Wendy Clark at Coca-Cola for nominating me to take the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. I accept this challenge. And 
I would like to see how many other redheads will join me to support ALS in the next 24 hours. Here we go! Woo! Woo! The whole thing, the whole thing! Cut. Um, and that received, I want to say, like about 340,000 views in a pretty quick time period, which was, which was nice to see. Um, Ronald was present in Rio. We run a program through McDonald's called the Player Escort Program, where kids from around the world win a trip to go to the World Cup and walk onto the field to play with their favorite players. So Ronald was there participating with them. Um, the social hub that some of you may have seen also features something we call the Daily Ronald. So every day there are animated GIFs about some other crazy, wacky event that's happening that day, like uh, Wiggle Your Toes Day or Twins Day or, or other things like that. So as I mentioned Instagram, the majority of the Ronald engagement has been on Instagram. Um, and it's been very positive, which is telling us that this is the right thing to do. I think it was Joel who mentioned earlier that you, know, you just have to try things. And if they don't work, you can change them quickly. And so we've been putting up a, a variety of different kinds of pictures from Ronald just to get a sense of what's working, what's not, what people like better than others. Um, so to date, to date, we have more than 10,000 followers. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but we haven't spent a penny to, to earn them. So everything that we've gained with Ronald on Instagram has been completely organic. Um, his following has been interesting, and, and it's a very diverse global audience. Over 30% of the followers are from Japan. And as we try to unravel it a bit and figure out why, it really a lot of the following has been prompted by traditional news coverage of Ronald's Instagram account that's driving people there. So it, it's, it's been funny to watch. We also have, I want to say, about 15% of the followers are from Brazil. So just wherever we can, we can get some coverage. Um, on the YouTube page, we've got about total video views of over 600,000, um, which again is good for us with just all our, our organic. Um, the social media hub, if any of you brought it up, is still live. But we are evolving that and, and looking to move that to a more mobile or responsive kind of site. You know, this whole idea of being where people are, nobody is going to destination websites. So how can we make this a lot more um, engaging for people and, and more useful? Um, some of the lessons that I think we've learned through all of this are, one, listen to your customers. Because they're really the ones who tell you what to do and, and how to evolve something like an icon like Ronald. Um, I think the second thing that's been very interesting is around pushing an organization to go beyond what they, they think is, is right or you know, challenging the status quo. Because if we hadn't pushed and pushed on Evolving Ronald for today, he'd still look like he did you know, two years ago, which isn't very modern, isn't very contemporary, nor were his actions or his behaviors. And, and the last thing I would say on, on the lessons learned, too, is you know, don't be afraid to try new approaches and take small risks that, that don't have a lot of downside. So if we put up a post and it's not doing well, we can take it down. It, it's not the end of the world. So you know, we're continuing to look for ways for Ronald to show how his mission, Fun Makes Great Things Happen, can actually come to life. He continues to show McDonald's dedication to the happiness and well-being of people worldwide, keeps kids informed on a variety of fun subjects, and continues to keep up his duties with Ronald McDonald House Charities as he has since 1974. You know, he's a star and continues to delight people of all ages, bringing fun smiles and joy and inspiring them to join him on his mission. So thank you. Um, first of all, congratulations on the launch and um, finding somebody with that big of shoes that can play soccer. <laughs> um, second of all, um, I know how important the Ronald McDonald House Charities is to your brand. and. Um, we, we, or my brand also has um, a lot of charities that we work with. And um, at a corporate level, we know that that is a true belief of ours, but we don't want it to ring false mm -hmm. when we're um, advertising that. So I was wondering how you balance that charity work with um, um, making it seem authentic. Mm -hmm. no, that's, that's interesting. Um, so you know, one of the things you have to keep in mind, too, is just structurally. Um, Ronald McDonald House Charities is a, its own 501c3 
three, right? Five, uh, corp, uh, nonprofit organization, whereas McDonald's is, is the for-profit corporation. So when we think about Ronald's role and how he gets involved, um, his primary purpose is to drive brand engagement and, and to further the McDonald's brand. He is also aligned with Ronald McDonald House Charities, and McDonald's every year in, in countries around the world put on a variety of fundraising activities and programs that Ronald plays a part of and supports and helps drive and helps drive awareness for, um, but they're really treated as, as two separate entities when we think about it and we look at it. Um, you know, and the other thing that Ronald does, which is great, is, you know, goes and visits kids who are in these Ronald houses or, or in hospitals, and that's not stuff we commercialize because it's truly just about being, being good people and helping the charity and, and doing good things on that end. Uh, it's incredible that um, Mick, you were speaking, and as, as you were speaking, uh, the Hamburglar started trending worldwide, so <laughs> McDonald's knows how to do it well. Um, how do you foresee, now that you know, the Hamburglar has kind of redesigned his, his outfit as well, the interplay with, with Ronald moving forward? Well, um, Hamburglar, how much did it say before I get into how much I can say? Uh, resurrects Hamburglar as Studley Suburban Dad. That's the ad age tweet. Does it say anything about our new product? I, no. Okay. No. So, um, <laughs> just an image. You may, from time to time, see the Hamburglar or other of Ronald's friends make cameo appearances. So, for example, probably four or five years ago, we um, partnered with DreamWorks Animation around their movie Monsters vs. Aliens, and we used Grimace in one of those TV commercials because he, we don't know what he is, but he kind of fits in that realm. So um, you'll see them from time to time. There, there is a relatively active presence on social media with the characters. Uh, for the London Olympics, we took Mayor McCheese and kind of did a flat Stanley with thing with him all over London, which was fun. Um, um, but from the mainstream media, we're, we're starting to, you know, focus more on Ronald and, and use the others on the fringe, I would say.